cut the call now. By an act of parliament, the Ghana Navy was established in 1959 and charged with the responsibility to insulate the coast of Ghana against seaborne invasion. The Navy primarily has two roles. Wartime roles, that is lifting army troops in times of hostilities and aggression, and peacetime roles. These include protection of Ghana's commercial shipping to conduct an amphibious operations and naval gunfire support and the provision of strategic sea transport for land forces as well as fisheries protection, protection of offshore and onshore installations, anti-smuggling, anti-piracy and human trafficking. At sea, there are some main issues that we have to deal with. We have to deal with uh, drug trafficking, illegal fishing, and fishery protection, search and rescue, uh, support of the fishermen in terms of uh, distress, and any other vessel that is within our waters in distress. Currently, there are two strategic commands. The Western Naval Command, which stretches from Newtown a border town with La Côte d'Ivoire to Winneba, with its headquarters situated at 2nd D, and the Eastern Naval Command, which stretches from Winneba to a flower with headquarters at Tema. The sea area stretches 200 nautical miles out to sea from the offshore line, thus covering a sea room of 64,000 square nautical miles. This is the Western Naval Command. The Western Naval Command is mandated with policing the waters by conducting random patrols, monitoring and surveillance for narcotics as well as vessels that engage in pear trolling and light fishing, all of which are illicit activities. Its jurisdiction stretches from Winneba in the central region to Newtown a border town to Ivory Coast in the western region. It covers the entire area of 32,000 nautical square miles, 200 nautical miles to sea. We we'll normally would we'll carry out uh, policing of these waters by conducting uh, random patrols. We we'll, we'll have ships that go out to sea to show some presence. A presence uh, kind of be uh, pro it's a proactive measure to we'll go out there, we we'll stay around and wait for something to happen. Uh, if nothing happens, then we come out. So when you go out policing, what we look out for is um, area of drugs, if any person is subject of you know, trafficking drugs, we look at narcotics, we control that. We look at controlling the fisheries, uh, enforcing the fisheries regulations. We look at um, protection for the fishermen themselves. Very, very essential because sometimes they go out there and then uh, they, they, they run out of steam or gas, you know, fuel or food. Uh, maybe the engine gets, uh, you know, becomes unoperational or serviceable. So we have to go out to try to help them out to, to uh, remedy the situation and then let them go about their, their level. Some fishermen are taking advantage of the illumination of the FPSO and the rigs, which attract fishers. These rigs operate on automated thrust propellers to enable them properly position themselves at the same spot every time for effective operations. These are prohibited fishing areas for fishermen. 
They are not supposed to operate around these structures. Their presence and activities there would impede the work of the rig and the FPSO and possibly lead to oil spillage, which by extension affects aquatic life. Fishermen are being educated on best practices and also being made aware of what constitutes an infringement and the associated sanctions. Of course, we have challenges there by way of fishermen who also go there because of the lights that um, the rigs and then the FPS will produce at night. It gives the big cloud, illumination big, and then that attracts fish. So a lot of fishes go there. A lot of fish migrate there. And, uh, uh, it's also attracting the fishermen to go and the fishermen what they do is they, they cast their net and drift nets and then they, they left them and these drift nets drag into uh, the, the, this in the, the, towards the, 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 the vessels and the, the rigs and the rigs are, uh, they work on what we call um, automatic thrust propellers, you know, the, 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 the computer uh, linkage. They come on and then help them to position themselves, um, in, you know, in the same way, the same spots every every time. And then when the propellers come automatically with this effect, of course, there's a lack of foul in them. So we try to ward them off. And then part of the task force uh, duty is to make sure that the fishermen don't get close to their their, their FTSO or their fire rigs. This is the Eastern Naval Command. The Eastern Naval Command is for the strategic importance of the harbor. The area is a large sea room for merchant ships and other shipping vessels. The Navy is highly reliant on the commercial port and competes for space with other vessels. The Navy has no harbor of its own at this command. It is taxed with the general safety and protection of the personnel and equipment in the shipping and the main harbor. It is the responsibility of the Navy to ensure that the Tema shipyard and its environs are protected against any form of intrusion and havoc to any structures such as Valco, the cement factory, whole stores and several other structures within the environs. One of the basic rules is protection of the fishing fleet, protection of the merchant fleet. We check against piracy, we check against smuggling. And because the main harbor, which is in Ghana, which is in Tema, is in a duration, we have to look after the strategic importance of the harbor because that is where everything economically passes through before it gets to the ordinary people in Ghana to use. At the Tema Naval Base, the Navy is equally on high alert for foreign vessels which enter our domain to poach. The Navy works closely with the Narcotics Control Board, National Security, Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, the Custom Excise and Preventive Service, Immigration and the Bureau of National Investigations to ensure smooth operations of our ports. The fleet of the naval ships have some very interesting names. Sebo, Jata, Achimota, Anzone, Bonsu, Elmina, Afajato, Komenda, Asuanse, Yogaga, and others. On board GNS Sebo. This is the Ghana Navy ship Sebo. It is a duty ship with an original complement or capacity of 45. It is a fast patrol ship built in Germany, meant for attack purposes, fisheries protection, anti-smuggling, search and rescue. This ship is boarded for two main reasons. To ascertain and gather intelligence and also to confirm an earlier information the Navy may have received. So you see the name, the name of the vessel they paid by banker cards on this date. Yeah. This is the amount they paid. This is the this is a type of vessel. So this is the name of the vessel. This is the yeah. one you saw that was written. Yeah. This AF685 is also written there. This is the owner of the vessel. 65. Okay. Beyond 30 meters water depth. So where they are now, they cannot fish. Mm. 
because the depth of water, the depth of water is less than 30 meters. Yeah. But they were not fishing anyway, they were just passing okay. on so If yeah. they had a net in the water, then it means they are fishing. Okay. So their license and the registration is correct. Now, see what they write here. They say what? Mesh size, 60 millimeters and above. Mm -hmm. So that's the second phase. Yeah. If I check their nets and their mesh size is less than 60 millimeters, then they are doing illegal fishing. Mm. It means they are catching small, small fish. Okay. Once I see a small size net, I check their, their stores, their freezer room or cold room or whatever. You will surely see small fish if they are actually catching small fish. <laughs> we arrest you, there are so many ways. Depending on the situation, compliant, complying, nothing happening, I can tell you to proceed to harbor and they will come. If they want to be a bit shady, you know, then I can leave two of my people, one or two of my people on board, they will guide them to harbor. If it's very far or we feel that it's a situation that requires to go to have agent to send you straight. Okay. Depending on the response of a vessel being given orders by the Navy on sea patrol, boarding the intercepted vessel may either be opposed or non-opposed. Once on board an intercepted vessel, the first line of action by the Navy is to do a security sweep, basically clearing the vessel, its content and people on board of any weapon. Checks are made to find out what kind of vessel it is, whether it is duly registered with the requisite license and authorized to fish at that particular location. The vessel is also searched for small nets and lights, which some fishermen conceal and use for illegal fishing. If an anomaly is detected, the vessel is either escorted back to shore or asked to report to authorities pending further investigations. Foreign vessels are expected to have a crew comprising 75% Ghanaians. The Navy, after its preliminary checks, then checks the hatches of the vessel to inspect the catch. Fishermen are expected to use prescribed nets for fishing. If the fish stock is solely small fishes, it is an obvious indication that the right nets are not being used. It is an offence and could attract a sanction. This thing happens a lot. So what I can guarantee you, you will get a lot of calls. Oh. They didn't mention your name. So what's the essence of the call? Okay. The director is probably scared that they've been, they've been caught. No, not that because we give them time that we land at the port. But right now, no. Tell your director that Navy is on board. The Navy, I told them Navy is on board. Tell your director that until Navy leave your ship, your ship is on board. No, no, they asked me about Are you telling me, are you, are you going to do what I'm asking you to do or you are telling me what the director is saying? Cut the call, now. We have um, a small boat. A defender class boat. I think that's the one. Yeah. yeah. We'll so. we, have, we have two of them here. That is stationed here. Yeah. Those ones, we use them for fast launching. If there's any emergency, we launch them because it can do our 30 nautical miles. Okay. That's quite fast. So it goes and comes back as fast as possible. How often do you maintain? There are no physical structures to show the maritime boundaries. Therefore, vessels can enter and exit. Even warships on innocent passage can traverse our waters without any difficulties provided certain conditions are met. It is important that the Navy has the capacity to monitor and know what vessels are in our domain and what exactly they are doing. Maritime security is something that we are not taking for granted. It simply tells us that the role that we are to play to ensure that laws are obeyed out at sea and that no unlawful acts are carried out. And in doing this, we are to ensure that all the activities out there, at least we have knowledge of what is happening there, which we term the maritime domain awareness. To fight drug trafficking, a lot of intelligence and collaboration with other security agencies is a requirement if the country is to succeed in dealing with the menace. Ghana, through NACOB, 
liaises with external security agencies and passes on information on the movement of vessels carrying such drugs to the Navy for further actions. The fisheries regulations confer on the Navy the power of the police. As far as enforcement of fisheries regulations and laws are concerned, the Navy has been doing the enforcement of the fisheries regulations with some challenge due to its poor fleet states. Yeah, it's in the on, interest of the nation and they prevent any abnormalities around it because when something is going on at the sea, they are the, the right person to or right people to. I mean, save the situation. We understand that at times when the lance is and they don't renew it, you see, like they are cheating the government at the same time. They draw, they draw the giving and this is the test they have to draw all this and so. The type of net they are using, they say it's all good. I mean, that robber one from China. I mean, the navies have been arrested, some of them. So they are some of the things. However, the situation will change with the arrival of the fast patrol boats from China on 22nd October 2011. Task forces have been set up to ensure that vessels embarking on fishing expeditions are searched to ensure that equipment that could be used to breach the fisheries laws are confiscated and their owners handed over to the police for further action. The Navy undertakes patrols to monitor and ensure that vessels engaged in illegal methods of fishing are arrested and prosecuted. It is interesting to note that quite recently, a ship was hijacked by pirates 46 nautical miles south of Togo. The ship was sent to an unknown destination where a total of about 7.6 metric tons of fuel was siphoned from her before she was finally released. This trend puts the Navy on high alert to act of piracy, which is gradually heading westwards. It is extremely important for the Navy to position itself in the event of any intrusion and beef up its operation to maintain the maritime integrity of our domain. Time was when acts of piracy was concentrated in the area just around the uh, Nigerian coast, Nigerian Benin coast. But if you remember, just last month, there was a ship which was uh, hijacked by pirates 46 nautical miles south of Togo. And this ship was sent to an unknown destination and a total of about 7.6 metric tons of uh, fuel were siphoned out of her before she was finally released. So looking at the trend, one can confidently say that this acts of piracy is gradually moving westwards. And we need to gear ourselves up to ensure that this thing does not come into our area of operation. Now, the government, in an attempt to revamp the Navy, has uh, constructed four ships from China, which will be arriving in the country on the 22nd of October this year. And with these four boats, we believe that we will be able to really maintain the maritime domain awareness that we are all craving for. In spite of the poor technical nature of their fleet, the Ghana Navy has managed to bring under control, to some extent, the breaches of the fisheries laws, especially in the area of pear trolling, light fishing, and the use of undersized mesh nets and explosives. Fisheries Enforcement Tax Forces have been established at Tema, Pram Pram, Elmina, and Sekundi. It is hoped that when the four patrol boats arrive, Ghana Navy will be better placed to ensure presence in the maritime domain to deter any act of piracy. We have plans. We are setting up a forward operational base very close to the oil rig, okay, around our Fasini area. And we're going to put very fast speed boats there. 
booster can do about 40 to 50 knots okay and at any point in time hmm, we have at least two of them there 24 7 to protect the fpso and the oil rig itself these are the kind of plans that we have okay the bigger ships will be at sea at any point in time if we get our ships at least we have two ships at sea in our waters they can be called upon at any time there's a projection it's in the pipeline you know the contract has to be signed with the republic of korea we're going to build vessels for it, which are bigger than what we have they call them the opvs offshore patrol vessels these opvs have helicopter platforms so in conjunction with the air force hmm, so they will operate the aircraft they will, they will go and serve it, uh, do surveillance long range it will increase our range they come and land on board and then they can vector as to where problem areas are and they will move the ships and we will attack the problem from there the navy collaborates with seps and the air force in their normal course of duty the air force constantly on their routine flight passes on information to the navy on any sightings which are suspicious in nature for further investigations. Requests for aerial recce of maritime areas are made to Air Force during periods of search and rescue, monitoring of suspected contacts at sea. The Navy also collaborates with NACOB. NACOB in turn liaises with other security agencies and the intelligence is passed on to the Navy for monitoring and interception. The idea of installing radars and other surveillance equipment for the navies in the sub-regions was recently proposed at a high-profile meeting of Chiefs of Defense Staff in Abuja, Nigeria. The CDSs came up with a, a plan that involved having a committee of 10 countries, ECOWAS countries, with the uh, representatives of legal experts to delve more deeply into this issue and come out with a coordinated plan for all the ECOWAS countries to operate jointly and fight piracy and protect all resources along the Gulf. Whilst the team gets to work, individual navies along the Gulf have been encouraged, including Ghana, to heighten up their naval patrols. Because of piracy, hmm, uh, there is the need, in fact there has always been the need for all the countries within our sub-region, mainly the Gulf of Guinea, to work together and, uh, and collaborate by way of sharing information and sharing intelligence so that if an offense is committed in one's country and is heading to another guy's country, you could be called upon and told that this is what happened. Then you can take uh, appropriate action by arresting the vessel. We do this a lot with the Nigerian Navy. Recently, uh, a vessel was hijacked in Lagos with uh, fuel. It's, it's refined fuel, okay? And then uh, I was called by my colleague in Nigeria and told me that the vessel was heading towards our place and we activated our operations and the, the vessel was arrested and kept in Tema and the Nigerian Navy came with the warship to come and escort it back to Lagos. Those are the kind of collaboration that we are trying to have. This This collab collaboration could begin between two countries where they could share intelligence and progress to join patrols in their maritime domain. As any other government institution, logistical and financial constraints hinder the effective operations of the Ghana Navy. Ships require major refit every five years. It costs several hundreds of thousands of dollars to have this done. The Navy seems to lack the expertise to do this here locally. It is a serious drain on the national press to send a ship out for a refit. Spare parts availability continue to be a problem. Budgetary constraints have also had its fair share on naval operations because it takes a long time for Tema shipyard 
to be paid bills incurred for docking of naval ships. The shipping does not, the shipyard does not give priority to docking of a navy ships. Maintaining our ships is very expensive. Access to Tema shipyard has always been with difficulty. The Navy is unable to dock her ships at the program periods because shipyard authorities would delay her entry for as long as a minimum of six months. Fortunately, the government of Ghana is constructing a slipway to replace the old one at the naval base at 2nd D, which is the technical hub of the Navy. The project, when completed, has the capacity to accommodate ships worth about 550 tons with a length of 60 meters. This will assist the Navy to slip her ships to undertake repairs as well as render service to the fishing fleet within the locality. The slipway has the capacity to accommodate two ships at a time. It will also provide employment for the catchment areas. On its completion, uh, the slipway will be able ships at a time. The slipway is used to um, just expose the bottom of the ship for cleaning and then uh, carrying out other maintenance work. So the ship comes through here and there's going to be a positioner at the far end there which will guide the ship onto the cradle. Now, when the ship gets onto the cradle, it is well positioned. Then it will be winched by a winch, which is contained in a winch house over there. Now, on reaching here, the the first ship, that is the top one, the ship which 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 is currently going to be uh, well worked on, will be winched to the right side under this parking place. So, after that. The credit can come back and take another ship. The Navy currently has seven ships, five of which are fast patrol boats and two supply ships used to provide strategic sea transport for the land forces. The ships have some technical challenges, but because of the ingenuity of the technical personnel, the Navy is able to get one or two of them to go to sea. For now, we have uh, four fast patrol boats, namely GNS Achimota, GNS Yogaga, GNS Sibo, and GNS Jata. They are the fast patrol boats we have currently. In addition, we have two logistics vessels, and these are GNS Ansoni and GNS Bonsu. At the background, you can see GNS Ansoni and, and GNS Bonsu. And then just to my left is a GNS Achimota which is the flagship of the Ghana Navy now. The senior most uh, Navy officer in the fleet is born on the flagship. So that is GNS uh, Achimota. Uh, just uh, this year, we took delivery of one fast patrol boat also from South Korea, which we commissioned in January. And uh, now, that is now also in part of the fleet. That's what we have currently. So for now, we have seven ships in the Ghana Navy fleet. In addition, we have uh, seven Defender class boats. These are small boats that we use for inshore patrols. And uh, we have uh, two just behind me now in the water. We have two in Tema, and then the remaining three at the naval dockyard, where we are just coming from. We are also expecting four new ships from China. For us, uh, as a Ghana Armed Forces, we have already put a plan we call Operation Jubilee. This is an operation for the Ghana Armed Forces to protect the oil industry. And it is having the Ghana Navy as the lead agency with Army and Air Force in support. The Navy currently is carrying out sea patrols to the rig and to the border areas. The Air Force 
does patrols, area patrols to the operational areas and the army is also doing patrols to the operational bases on land. So we have a coordinated activity going on all the time to ensure that we are on top of the situation, ready to combat any threat. The future of the Navy looks bright with all these developments and ongoing projects. When all acquisitions finally arrive, the Navy will be better placed to deal with any unlawful situation in our maritime domain.